painting, Welcome to Expression and Painting by Paul Creamy. Tonight I brought back the painting I did last month, The Flowers on the Sidewalk. I said I'd finish it tonight, but you know, I started touching it here, and I started touching it there, and before I know it, the painting's done. So this is what the painting looks like complete. And it's really got a nice personality. It, it has this beautiful, really sun-bathed side, and it's got this really nice shadow, and the shadow on the sidewalk. In that when I did it earlier, the sidewalk was brown, and I didn't care for it, so I changed it to gray. I think this really looks nice. It has a nice quietness about it. Very, very pleased with the way this painting came out. So the, I brought a couple of other paintings tonight to show you. In fact, I brought this painting that... I'm doing this cancer support community show in Norwell at 120 Longwood Drive in Norwell, Mass. And it's February 10th is the open house from 1 to 5. And uh, Not Your Average Joe's is doing the food. And Fratelli's in Weymouth is doing the pastries. And my son-in-law is going to help me with the wine. So this is the painting I did for the invitation. And if you got one in the mail, please come because we're trying to do something about cancer. This is the painting, and I, it's a painting I did from a photograph I had for 20 years. I kept putting it away, putting it away, and finally I said, I'm going to paint it, and I painted it, and that's the one I used for the invitation. I've been busy. I've been painting really a lot of paintings. I found, did this birch tree painting. You know, this is 101 birch tree paintings, like Dalmatians. And I have this fascination with these birch tree paintings, this happened to be a painting I painted over. And when I paint over a painting, I always try to do something that's dynamic because you have all of this under stuff underneath the painting. And you get all of this beautiful, crackly kind of feeling. So this, this Birch Street painting, I really love it. It has this quiet, night-like, dusk kind of painting, twilight. And I brought one other painting. And then I'll start. Because tonight we're going to do something different. Instead of a photograph, I brought a still life. I brought these dried flowers, and we're going to paint them. I did another painting of the spit. And the last time I painted the spit, it was 24 by 30. This is kind of a panoramic. This is number 15 of the spit series. And it, I really love the, the tranquility of it and the quietness of it. And the, and the way it just sort of makes you feel very, very comfortable. Every time I paint this, somebody comes in and buys it, which is a great thing, because artists need people to buy their work. All right, so tonight we're going to do this still life. It's right here, and we got this canvas, so I'm going to set up the canvas, and then we're going to get off and going. I got it locked down, positioned. All right, so I, I, I got this purple, and I got yellow, and I got all these gorgeous colors, so the background color has to be something that's going to be comfortable with all of this. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the background color first. So I've mixed. I got this big fat brush. I have somebody in Pembroke that always wants to know what size brush I'm using. I think her name was Terry. I, I think uh, this doesn't have a number. It's a big fat brush. Okay, Terry? Or Teresa? I think it's Teresa. Teresa, it's a big fat brush. So I've mixed up three or four colors. Yeah, it's like a burnt orange, like an Italian burnt orange. Nice. That'll look really good against the purple. So we get this thing. Well, we start with a black canvas every time. Every time for the last 15 years, a black canvas. And the reason I use a black canvas is because it intensifies the color. And I happen to love the color to be intensified. This thing's jumping around on me. We'll have to straighten it out a little these are all little old easels. I mean, they take a beating. I've been banging this thing around for 40 years. It's one of my first easels. I think it's grown up with me. Yeah, although, I think the easel's grown up more than I have. But painting and doing paintings is something that you do because you love to do it. I, I've been posting something by Jobs. He says, do whatever you uh, love at work and love to do it. And it's really true. If you're going to do something for a life work, make sure you love it. Or don't do it. I have loved painting since I was seven years old. You know, and never stopped loving it. 
I raised four kids. I cut hair for 43 years. That was another one of my jobs. I had all of these shops, but I, I only worked a couple of days doing that in three days, in four days cut painting. So painting has always been the passion in my life. And it's going to always be the passion in my life. But I'm doing something exciting. I'm going to go to Ethiopia in September. So I've started getting my shots. I got two shots the other day. My arms felt like a gorilla. I'm telling you, that Techna shot. Oh, my God. I says, you have to throw the dot that far across the room. Starts laughing. The nurse is a good friend. All right, so let's get this blocked in. We're almost done. Then I'll dry it. The background color can't be so strong that it takes over the foreground. So that's why I've got this low-key background. Most of the time you see me, I never used a, a dark color like this, but I wanted something that would not take over with these flowers. These flowers are powerful, and they're gonna, you're going to see them jump off the canvas. My friend Debbie said, you see, I've seen this on your website, and it's true. I painted this vase of flowers maybe four or five times. But every time I paint it, it's different. The background's going to be different, and the foreground's going to be different, and the flowers are going to be different, so it's going to be a different painting. All right, we got this background somewhat down. Let me just get this down a little more. All right, I want the, the, the base to be a little lighter, so I'm going to mix a little white with this. So we got, we got it blocked in somewhat. I'm not going to say this is going to stay like this because <laughs> I paint it and then I go to the studio and I sit in my rocking chair and I look at it and I say, nah, that does not work and I'll go after it again, change it. So we got this color down. Take my favorite toy. Take out some of the moisture. And you know, this background is very important in the way the painting takes shape. I just banged it on there, but you know something? These colors are going to look really good against the purple. I want, besides, you see this vase? It may not look like that on the canvas. Between looking at the vase and getting it on the canvas and getting it out of my brain and getting it on the canvas is a whole other world. And the only reason I use the blower is because I'm doing this in an hour and I'm trying to get this procedure to move along so you can see some of the drawing and some of the painting. All right, we got that down. So the next thing I'm going to do is the vase. Let me find a little brush that I like. What size is this? Oh, this is size six, Terry. Teresa, you'll like this. This is a great one. A little black brush, size six. And we're going to taint the vase. Uh, the, the, vase. the vase is kind of blue and gets some yellow, so let's go to the blue. There's two shades of blue, light blue and medium blue. And it's, it's a really deep blue. I, I, I've done that deep blue too much. I'm going to go with this color because I like the background. You'll see what I mean. So we put this, and i got to be careful because I had this lady from Long Beach, California email me, and she says to me, Paul, everything that you paint leans to the left. <coughs> <coughs> and I said, well, you know, I have this cataract on the left eye, and it's, so I'm trying to concentrate on not making everything lean to the left. You know, I love people like that. She's a doll. 
And every time I think of her, I post flowers on her site because I think anybody that helps you see things that you don't see is a blessing. It's a message that's it's great. And never offended or upset by somebody telling you how to fix something. Painting away here, getting the vase down. I think that vase is a little fatter at the bottom. So let me make this a little fatter at the bottom like that. You're not going to see much of the top. And don't get nervous because you're in charge. You know, the vase, <laughs> no big deal. Not perfect, who cares? I don't care. I paint impressionist. I paint my soul. I paint from what I feel. And if the, that's the way I feel, and that's the way it's going to look. And that's all that matters. Somebody's sitting out there saying, that's not right. That vase is silly. Who cares? That's how you feel. That's not how I feel. And don't let anybody else talk to you like that. You talk to yourself in a manner, I am the best, and I am a great artist, and I am going to do this painting, and the painting gets done. And that's the kind of an attitude of, of gratitude. God gives you this talent and gives you the time to do it and the attitude to do it, and just do it. And I think too many people think about it too much. I think the act of doing is so much better than the act of thinking. All right, that's not done. None of this is done. This is just a procedure of starting. When I was younger, a lot younger, I don't know if I have them, I might have them in my coat pocket. Where did I put my coat? I think it's over here. Excuse me for a second. I'm going to get my crayons. I'm here. I didn't leave the world. I'm coming. Great job, Harrison. So I got these little white crayons. They're called Carandash, see? And what I do with these crayons sometimes, when I do something like this and I'm in the studio, I take these little crayons and I'll do some little sketches like this. And I'll put down kind of like a little sketch so that I get the position of what I want. And you know, I love this kind of stuff. Because this is what art is all about seeing in another dimension. And these are silly little sketches and these little crayons, they're water based, so they disappear. And when I have done whole entire paintings. I worked with these crayons and they've done whole entire paintings. It's taken me six to seven months to paint a painting with these little tiny crayons. And oh, absolutely out of your mind. And people will say, how did you do that, Paul? And I said, I did it with crayons. And they look at me and they say, oh my God. Making a mess here. Let me see. Okay, I got this brush all cleaned up. All right, let's do, let's do this. We'll do some of these flowers. You know, just, I'm going to block them in for the time being. There's one right here, and, and you're going to say, that doesn't look like a flower. Well, it will be a flower before we're done. 
but we got to start somewhere, so we got to put the color on the canvas in the different areas. I promise you, there'll be flowers when I'm done. I'll, I'll eat the canvas because I know. And I try to balance these things. I mean, this has got all this stuff going on. And all this yellow is going to come on and it's going to change. When you do these kind of things, it's the colors you use that make the painting come alive. And after, let me see. I started painting when I was seven and I'm 69. After all of these years, nothing in, about painting except gets me nervous. I just know when you do something like this, it's all going to fall into place. It all has a rhythm. It all has a rhyme. And it's just beautiful when it's done. I love painting these things. Somebody asked me, you know, I, I was posting in my website, I am Paul Creamy on Facebook, and I've been posting and I said, I did a hundred paintings of flowers in pots and a hundred paintings of gardens. And somebody said to me, well, why would you do so many? Because I couldn't get away from them. They, they were so happy and they were so joyful. And you know, I don't have them. They're all gone. Most of the people bought them. They were tiny, and they were reasonable, and people come along and bought them. We got this stuff hanging over the pot. Dried stuff, I love it. Just to put the paint down. Got stems. Got leaves, got stems, got. And see, it's starting to take shape. Now, I'm going to step back a little and take a look. See, it's a wonderful thing, painting, because all of a sudden, everything starts to make sense. And you just put paint on a canvas. You just look at this still life. It's gorgeous. It's got this life. This painting's going to jump off this canvas. I'm excited already, and I've just started. Who's this kid at the block? I say to myself, oh, God, you're so good to me. I watched this show, 18-minute talk by Elizabeth Gilbert. And it was magnificent. It was all about creativity. Ah, man, this woman. Ah, I was so impressed with her. She wrote the book, Pray, Eat, and something else. I don't know. Run around. No, I don't know what the third one was. Pray, Eat, and uh, God. You guys all know it. But she didn't think the book was going to be what it was. And it shocked her. And I, I got the biggest kick out of it because she was not one of these pretentious type persons. She was very down to earth and she made you feel like, hey, you know, the, the genius in all of us doesn't come from us. It comes from a source. And it was just beautiful. So we're starting to see this start to take shape. I just keep putting the paint down. Look at it. Touch it. Be generous. Some people paint and they're so afraid of putting too much paint on the canvas. You never can put too much paint on the canvas. I want that flower to feel like a flower. I want you to actually want to be able to smell it. So I throw the paint on there like this and I'm not worried about how it gets on or how it doesn't get on. I know it's going to get on. I know it's going to look great. And I know it's going to be a flower. And you just keep putting the paint on. All of a sudden, they're starting to take shape. We're starting to have this beautiful, i got to get some darker yellow. I want to put that sunflower in here. I think that sunflower is really gorgeous, so I need the dark yellow. I love this painting business. 
we should all paint. You know, we should all take up painting. Everybody should paint because they, they're free. And you know, don't take yourself serious. This guy has more fun because he wakes up in the morning and he says, today is going to be one of those blessed days. Today I'm going to celebrate what I do with God. And I ask God what he wants me to do. And he says, paint a vase of flowers. And people will look at me and say, yeah, he talks to you like that. Well, somebody talks to me like that because that's what I'm doing. And that's what this girl Gilbert said, that there's a spirit that comes along and helps these artists, as long as the artist doesn't think it's him. I know, I know what she was saying, because I've had that feeling quite a few times in my life. Sometimes I felt I shouldn't even sign the canvas. I felt like I had a visitor come and help me out here. Yeah, there's this cathedral in Ethiopia at the top of a mountain in La, La Bella, Ethiopia. And there's a bunch of us going from a, a prayer group in Abington. And then there's a bunch of Irish people coming from Ireland. And they're going to meet us in Washington and we're all going to go. And that ought to be fun. Oh, my goodness. I want to step back for a second. I have my reducing mirror. I'm going to take it and look at the vase. See the shape and look at the flowers. And this, all of this stuff is shaping. And I should dry some of this up a little so that we don't stack it up. When I bring this painting back, it's going to take your breath away because I can feel the painting already. I can feel the feeling of this painting. This painting, and there's nothing here yet. There's only a couple of dabs. And another thing is, this flower arrangement sits right in front of me all the time. I've been looking at this flower arrangement for 20 years. It's, it's nothing important, but it's always there. And it's always looked at. So I could probably paint this painting with my eyes closed. Or I could get rid of the flower arrangement altogether and paint it. Put some lines in this just for the heck of it, see what it looks like. I may not keep them, but we'll see. See, nothing to painting. Just do. Just do it. That's all. Don't listen to that little voice that's in the back of your head saying, yeah, i got to put this line in a space like this. It's a, an illusion. It's, it's a, a thing. It's just a line. It just adds to the whole texture of the painting. I might go over this a couple more times. I don't know, but I just wanted to put that on there because it changes the feeling of the painting. It makes you go up into the flowers, and that's why I grabbed it. That's why one of the reasons I took this flower vase with me because 
I want this action going on. All right, let's do a sunflower here. We're going to do a really nice one right here. Sunflower has that little black spot in the center. We'll just put that there. Great. One sunflower. Let's do some more. And the trick when you're painting is always keep your brush clean. Oh, constantly wash your brush. Constantly wipe it off. Because the, everything that gets contaminated if you don't keep washing your brush. I watched a little tape on a icon painter and one of the things he said is every time wow it's flying by when it's a good show like this it just disappears the whole night goes away and i better get going here so what do we got we got uh, this yellow one let me see let's put another yellow one here 30 seconds and 30 minutes and boom we're off and running Just keep putting paint down, all of a sudden. And they don't have to be perfect. You are the flower painter. <laughs> and let it just a point. Apply it. Put it down. You can't make a mistake. You're in charge. Purple, red, another one. They talk to you. They talk to me. Put me here. Throw some color in here. Don't be afraid. You're in charge. It's your painting. You know, 90% of my supplies I'm buying at the Dollar Tree. I use these napkins, and I use these paper towels, and I use these trays, and I have this plastic, like, rubber made thing that the tray fits in, and the paint stays forever. It doesn't ever, ever go away. Great. All right. I want to make these purple ones a little darker. So I'm going to mix dark blue with the purple. Let's see what we come up with here. And keep applying the paint, keep putting the flowers in, eventually all of that stuff will start to make sense. And just keep Dabbing away. Now I'm stop talking for a second because I was concentrating making these stems so that it looks like flowers. Get a little creative here. We'll throw a little stem on the tabletop.
So we've got this painting, and it's really starting to shape up a little now. And I haven't done any of the detail. All I've done is the blocking in. The detail comes now when it's dry, as this dries and you go over it. Let me take a look. I'm going to go sit in a chair over here and take a look. I get my little reducing mirror. And what do you think, Harrison? We think we're getting there, buddy? It covered the canvas, didn't it? Oh, Harrison's my critic. The best. Sitting back there drawing. Future artist. His mother's Debbie, and she's great. She's a nurse. Fantastic. We got Ted tonight. And the great Colleen and Bob in the car in the back room doing the Well see it it has sort of a quiet look so far. It doesn't jump out at you, but it will when I'm done. When I go over the vase, when I go over the flowers, when I start well let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'll start right now. I'm still using my little six brush, Teresa. So you see, start doing stuff like this, and all of a sudden, things will start to change. The painting isn't something you just do. It's something that happens as you go along. You have the image, and once you have the image and you have the sketch down, just paint. You're in charge. The line fades, the line fades. If it gets fat, it gets fat. Oh, I love it. It's really nice. I want that purple to be real light, so I'm going to throw a ton of white on top of it. I'm going to make it come alive in a whole new sense here. I just added gesso to this white uh, paint, and I've lightened up this. It's all of a sudden. This color is going to come alive. Jump out up there. It starts to blend in. I need a little more purple. Where did I put you? Hmm. I think you're hiding on me. Oh, there it is, on the table. Nice. And I don't hurry myself. No, I don't get frustrated with myself. I work at a certain pace. If I was in my studio, I'd be sitting in my rocking chair, probably asleep. I think I spend more time sleeping than I do painting. Because I don't sleep much. I, I wake up at 3.30. I'm out of the bed at 4. And we go to the studio. My wife will say, what time did you leave the house? Oh, I don't know. Well, 5, 5.30. She don't get up until 7.
But you know something? My whole life I've never slept. It used to drive my poor mother nuts. God love her. My father never said nothing, but my mother, you've got to get more sleep. Oh, please. Because I didn't realize I had an autoimmune disease. I had a thyroid condition. <laughs> I have driven people crazy my whole life. Oh, God. Just too much energy. I think it's a blessing. God. It's starting to take shape. And this kind of a painting, like I said, when you paint a hundred of anything, you have it all in your head. I got carried away. I put that leaf down there. I should have waited because I might have to change the tabletop a little. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. God. So let's see if I'm going to change the tabletop a little. Yeah, that might change it a little. It's all right. This is the light side, and the other side's the dark side, so. But see, what this does is it makes the pot, or the vase, or whatever you want to call it, jump out. And I love that. Moving along here. So we get this kind of even. And this may not be the color. Sometimes I've changed this color five, six, seven times. You know, but I keep looking at it, sitting back, saying, okay, that may work. I might change all, all the other, but they, I like the brown in the background. I think it looks nice. I need to get some yellow, really light yellow. Here we go. Nice. And so, when you're painting, don't be stingy with your paint. I keep saying that because it's true. Find a place that sells the paint inexpensive. I mix my paint with gesso. And it drives people crazy, but I do. I, I like what it does. And I've been doing that for years and years and years. Uh, and it seems to give me this real nice texture that I like. Sometimes I use a lot of it, and sometimes I don't, I don't too use too much. This is called Expression and Painting by Paul Creamy, and we're doing this, and we're going to have a show at the 
Cancer Support Community in Norwell on 120 Long Street. I have 70 paintings. I already sold two of them so far. And it's going to be up until the whole month of March. So if you can't get there February 10th, it'll be there for a month afterwards. So people have a chance. Last year we did really well. We sold quite a few paintings and they raised some good money. And they have a raffle. They, I'm raffling off one of the Birch Tree paintings, a $2,500 painting for a $20 raffle ticket. And that money goes, all of that money goes towards the cancer support community. I could see Van Gogh standing behind this easel doing something like this. He had that kind of really wild, beautiful stuff that he threw at you. And it just comes out and jumps at you. I love his stuff. I love his work. Everybody thinks he was, um, had a problem, but I think he had epilepsy. And that was his problem. Nothing, nothing really crazy. It's just that they didn't know how to treat epilepsy in those days. They thought it was a mental illness. Today, they would have treated it and it would have been around a lot longer, probably. You're in charge. When you do a painting like this, you put down what you want to put down. If you want to stick something somewhere and it feels good, then stick it somewhere. That's what this is all about. I'm looking at this arrangement. It's got these real weird things. I don't even know what they are. They look like pods of some kind. Different colors and different shades. And I'm just going to put them there. Boy, they're starting to shape up, really. Keep applying the paint, keep dabbing away, keep doing what you do. All of a sudden the painting will start to come alive. Don't be afraid, you are in charge. This is your canvas, this is your painting. I'm going to fix that leaf because it's driving me nuts.
15 minutes. How can I slow down? Boy, look at this. Whoa, back. It's really starting to shape up. Let's put some more power back into this painting. Whew. I'm going to slow it down a little so I can get some of the detail. And you know something about painting? If it's yellow, the opposite of yellow is purple. So you put purple in there. If, and if it's red, you put green. And if it's yellow, you put purple. <laughs> I love it. But this particular vase and flowers is only a couple of colors, you know, and so we're having a good time here at painting away. And by adding gesso to the color, it it um, gives it a little more texture and a little different feeling. Changes the quality of the color, which I love. Just dripped it on the floor. Thank God we have somebody who doesn't care about the floor. He used to go crazy in Norway with me. I was always dropping. Then maybe put down a, uh, a top. I was getting paint everywhere. Oh my God. So when you're painting something like this, like I said, step back, take your time, look at it. Sometimes you, if you stand here like I'm doing right tonight and you keep whacking away at it, you have a tendency to overdo it. And you, so I, I, I bring the blower so that it'll slow me down and, and I can dry these things and I can watch the colors come to life. I'll paint something and I think it's really just what I want and I'll come in the next day and it'll be totally different than what I want and I'll say God how did that happen because the paint dried it, and it dried a different color than I wanted it I just had to repaint it that's all if you have it in your mind you want it to be a certain color stay with it And there's some people who would say, why are you painting all of this stuff right off the canvas? I don't care about it. The canvas is only what I want to paint. 
it's the flowers that I want to paint. I want them to bust out. I want them to take over. A friend of mine used to say that to me all the time. He's a great artist. He said, don't let the canvas control you. You paint what you want to paint. You put down what you want to put down. And if you want it to go over the edge or off the canvas, do it. You're in charge. Great advice. Constant flavor. Gee, God, she was a great artist. Loved her. I'm going to sit down for a minute and take a look. Ugh. Nice. Some of these flowers need to be darker. Some of them need to be lighter. There's just so much paint on the canvas. But when I'm in the studio and I'm sitting in my chair, and I, and I think I might make that vase even lighter. Although I like the color of the vase. And I'm starting to like the flowers. So what you do is you just keep on, see, I want these flowers here to jump out a little more, so I want to enhance the color. How do you do that? Well, you take the color and you add a little white to it. Lifts it up. As it dries, it seems to be getting a little duller. So I want to lift it up a little. And so sometimes I'll paint these flowers over and over and over and over until I get them where I want them. That's how. I want them to be a certain shade and a certain d dimension. I keep painting and painting until they're there. I want a happy painting. That's what I'm looking for in this painting. I want this painting to be very, very joyful. Budding artist, Harrison. I like it. Glad you showed up. If there's too much color of the same sort right in here. Just throw something on top of it. I mean, that's what this is all about. And flowers aren't perfect. You know, if you think you want to paint a perfect flower, take a photograph. That's about as close as a perfect you're going to get. This was oil paints, you'd never be able to do this. Not in a million years. Oil paints take forever. Oh. I jump out. I throw them out the window before I paint with oil paints. And there's some people who say they throw the acrylics out the window before they paint with acrylics. Good. Let me know so I can go by and get them.
tough getting old. I want a young body. I want to paint a whole bunch of more paintings. A whole ton of paintings. That's why I'm going to Ethiopia. Maybe I'll come back and paint a whole series of religious paintings. See that cathedral on top of the mountain. I want these purple flowers to be real darker. So I'm waiting till all of this stuff dries. And in the, in the morning, I'll get to the studio and I'll, I'll make them a little darker like the... They're almost there. There's just a shade here and there. But if you look at this arrangement, it has that same texture and that same feeling. There's a lot of space and there's a lot of activity. There's a lot of things jumping around. I like the vase. I'm, I'm thinking that the vase is probably very close to being done. I might, might make the vase do something a little different. Let me take a couple of these towels. I might make this side a little bit darker. Three minutes. Okay. All right. See, we started with this still life. I brought this arrangement in. Beautiful purple flowers. And, and uh, we painted the background this color. And we painted the vase this color. And I'm just fooling around with the texture of this vase, trying to give you a little more insight on how artists move your eye around in the sense that I'm trying to give it a tone that would make it feel like it's lighter on one side and darker on the other. And that's all. And I'm going to put down this brush and I'm going to talk about this painting and talk about the show and talk about, you know, painting and expression in painting is all about showing you how to see. I know how to see. I've been painting since I was seven. And I paint the way I paint, but I want you to paint the way you paint. So therefore, this is what we've done tonight. You can see the difference in the shades of the blue. So if you want to paint the active, just do it. Just go out and paint, because that's what it's all about. God bless and good night.